Okay, so on my Orange Pi 5 now, I have the Google Play Store installed, and I'll show you how to do it. And this is thanks to a comment from SRV UK, which directed me to the YouTube video, which is this one here. So the method is in this video, um, but I'm going to add my installation bits just to show you how to get Android onto an SD card, uh, and then I'll show the Google Play Store bit. Now, if you've already set up Android with my previous video, you just need to skip to this part in the video. Okay, so let's show you how to install it. So I'm gonna use my little Windows 11 Melee mini PC for this. So first up, I'm gonna put an SD card in my mini PC. Now I'm gonna launch the browser and go to the official website for Orange Pi 5, which is this one, orangepie.org. Need to go to hardware and click on more info on the Orange Pi 5. And then we need to click on download. And you can see there's various different operating systems here. This is the one we all want, uh, which is Orange Pi OS based on Android, but it's not there. Uh, and the Ubuntu and Debian images don't have any proper 3D graphics support at the moment. So I'm gonna go with the Android image. So you can click on downloads. You can see there's a folder here. If we double tap that, and then we've got an SD card image or an NVMe image. Now, I'm not going to use the NVMe image at the moment, but I will show how to do it in another video. So let's go for the SD card image. And then there's one for using the little LCD screen. And this one is just normal for an HDMI output. So if we click on that and download it. And download anyway. Obviously, download anything at your own risk. But if you bought an Orange Pi, you're going to have to use their software. So that's saving now. Let's go back a few steps to take us back to this page and we want the official tools. There is a manual in here which tells you how to do things but I think that it is, uh, well it's a translation and it, it's not actually that clear uh, and there's an extra step that you need to do which I'll show. So go to, do, go to the downloads on the official tools and we need this one, Android Image Writing Tool SDD. So let's just download that and then click on the download up here. I think you need to be logged in with a Google account to be able to do this, to be able to access Google Drive. Okay, so that's saving and the Android is nearly finished. There's a couple of minutes left. So what we can do is go to the folder where these are gonna turn up and we need to unzip this. So if we right click and extract all and extract. So I'll just leave it in the downloads folder you can see that takes us to it. Let's go back and delete that zip file because we don't need that anymore. And how are we getting on these downloads? Just wait for that to finish. Okay, so both downloads are finished now so I can close down the web browser. And in my downloads folder, I now have the image that I want to write to the SD card and I've got the tool. So if I open the folder that the tool's in and open the next folder, uh, so don't do this next step, but I'll just show you what happens if you double click on it. So you can see Windows is protecting your PC. Uh, so I'm going to hit run anyway. And yes, you can see that this tool is currently in Chinese, which if, unless you know Chinese isn't very useful. Uh, so let's close that down and go to config. And you can see here language and selected is one at the moment. Now I'm guessing that says English, so I'm going to go and change that to two, hit file and save, and then just close that, and then click on this SD firmware tool, and again, yes to allow this app, and that looks better. Now you need to make sure that you've selected the drive that you wanna to write to, because this, there is a danger that this could write over your Windows install. You can see mine says SD card, and it's 58 gig. The drive in my PC is 128 gigs, so I know that it's the right one. Now I need to hit restore, and yes, and that's just gonna clear off the SD card waiting for an operating system. And strangely, it closes the tool, so let's open that tool again. Let's just try that again. And then I need to select restore, and yes. Okay, so it's come up with a, a formatting disk failed, so I'm gonna use Raspberry Pi Imager just to clear off the SD card, because it's a brilliant tool for that. I've got a separate video on how to install Raspberry Pi Imager. You can install it on pretty much any device. So let's select that. Choose OS, scroll all the way down to Arrays. Choose Storage, that's my SD card, and hit Write, and Yes. 
You can always rely on Raspberry Pi Imager. Right, so let's close that down and open this tool again. And yes, now we're going to choose SD boot. Now we need to unzip, so let's just move this out of the way and go back one to our downloads folder or go back again to our downloads folder and you can see this is a zipped file. So I'm going to open that with WinRAR and extract to and I'm going to put it in the downloads folder and OK. Let's go back to the tool, we can close this down now, select firmware, you can see that the unzipped file is there, click on that and hit open and then hit create and yes. Okay that's all finished and I've got creating upgrade disk OK, so I can close that or I can click OK and close that down. Take the SD card out of here and pop it in my orange pie and then swap over my HDMI cable. I don't usually do it this way, but it's so I can screen capture and my mouse keyboard for my Logitech. And let's switch on. Okay, nice reassuring Orange Pie logo. Okay, so first up, let's turn on developer mode. So drag up from the bottom and click settings. Scroll down to about tablet. Scroll down to build number and keep clicking until it says you are a developer. There you go, you are now a developer. And now when we go to system, and uh, you can see there's developer options. We shouldn't need to change anything in here. So let's go back to the home screen. And in this Google bar, we're gonna type Magisk, like that, and accept all. And we're gonna go to magiskmanager.com, and scroll down. and download the Magisk app. Close that advert down. And you can see three, two seconds to download. And allow. And download. At the top left you can see that it's downloading. Now we can drag down from the top left. And you can see we've got this download. Click on it. Go to settings and allow from this source. That's going to allow you to install things from the web browser and hit install. So let's open that. Click on install here and direct install and let's go. And you can see that's installing. Okay so that's all done so let's hit reboot. And let's go back to the web browser page. So I'm going to drag this over to the left. Uh, and then we're going to do a search for Magisk GApps. And we're looking for the SourceForge link, which is this one here. Just cancel that. I don't know why it's trying to download that again. Uh, and accept. Click on Files and scroll down, click on Android 12 L Alpha and scroll down, click on this folder which is the dated one, 17th to the 10th and scroll down, click on basic and try to download anyway and download And we can drag down from the top left and see that it's downloading, albeit slowly. And it's coming in as a uh, .bin file. Now, when I downloaded it with the Edge browser, it downloaded it as a .zip file. And you need to change it to .zip if it does come down as a .bin file. So now that's finished, let's click on the home screen, drag up from the bottom, uh, I usually put files on the desktop, so let's drag that up to the middle here and click on files. And just close down this, uh, it's only because we started it for the first time. So this is the GApps one that we want to change. So right click on it and rename. And then we need to delete the end of this, uh, including the dash A, and change it to .zip. 
I didn't need to do this when I did it before because I used the Edge browser, but for some reason with this browser it changes it to dot bin. So click OK, then go to the Magisk app again, and click OK on the normal state message. Uh, click on Modules, click Install from Storage, click on the Hamburger menu, and Downloads. Now it's not showing up as the file, so I'm going to go into Settings and see if I can change that. So let's hit home, drag up from the bottom, go to settings, go to apps, click on Magisk, install unknown apps and turn that on. Now let's go back into it. So we drag over, it's here. Probably need to go out and back in again. So, downloads, yeah, GApps is showing up. Double click on that, and you can see copying zip to temp directory. So that's all done, let's hit reboot. So this device isn't Play Protect certified, let's click on that. Click on learn more. and scroll down to device isn't certified and then scroll down to register your device and you need to sign in with your Google account and then we need to find our Google Services Framework Android ID so if we open up another tab And do a search for APK Pure. And just click on that. And then we need to search for device ID. And you can see there's loads of them here. This looks like the one that was used in the video I mentioned at the start. Close down the advert and download the APK and download. So we can drag down from the top left and we can see that that's downloaded. So let's click on that and install and open. And you can see this device ID. And if this goes out of the way, we'll be able to copy it. And then we need to go back to the web browser, open another tab, and type in hex to decimal. And this rapid tables one should do. Again, the same one as uh, the other YouTube video showed. Click OK. Paste that in, control V, and convert. And then we need to copy this, control C. Need to go back to that tab, so this register one. And we need to copy that in, control V. Click on I'm not a robot, and register. device registered. So now you've got to wait a bit. Uh, sometimes it can take 10 minutes, sometimes it can take half an hour. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes. I'm gonna reboot. Actually, I'm gonna go power off. Still not working. So probably after about 25 minutes, if I drag up from the bottom and click on the Play Store, I can now sign in as normal, no message. and choose whether you want to back up to Google Drive and accept. And now I have the Play Store. I did actually try this before and for some reason it didn't work. And uh, what I did, rather than reinstall the operating system, uh, because I remembered it said something about if you reset your system that the device ID would be different. So I went into settings, 
went to system and reset options and I did an erase all data factory reset other than that, I couldn't get it to work. So if you can't get it to work, uh, if you've waited half an hour, an hour, uh, and it's still not working, and you've rebooted a few times, then I would say do that reset in the settings. And now if I go to the Play Store, I can start installing things like the Chrome browser. There we go, and install. and YouTube so you can subscribe to Lee PSP video. There you go, install that as well. You can see lots of uh, video streaming and audio apps come up. Most of those should be supported. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.